In this video, we're going to be building a button interaction in Figma. And this interaction, or more like an animation, is going to serve as a confirmation that we pressed the button. The goal of this interaction, or more like an animation, is to show a visual confirmation flying upwards from the button to show the user that they have pressed the button and that something happened, right? So this is the sketch and this is the existing design system. Now, you might be asking, what is all of this? Well, this is a result of the work we've done in this video, which is a five hour tutorial on how to design an app in Figma, which is completely free. And in this video, we're gonna be adding into this design system. So if you'd like to download the source file and you would like to use this interaction in your project, you can go and check out this video or click the link below to purchase the source file that contains all of this. So you're not gonna be getting just this one simple interaction that we create during this video, but you're also gonna get all of this stuff included and you'll be able to reuse that in your project. So let's get started. Now, why don't we use the existing infrastructure, right? Why don't we use what we already have in this design system, which is this button? As you can see, there are a few versions, variants or states defined. And specifically, we're talking about the pressed down state. This simple, this basic primary button has an interaction defined where if you keep it pressed down, the visual style moves from this button to this one, right? So it kind of darkens. We wanna use this, so let me just use an instance of this component. I'm pressing Alt and dragging. I'm copying this, so we have now an instance of this component. And we will be creating a new component that will be using an instance of another component. So basically, when I now take this instance of the button component and then I create a component from this, you can see that we get another button component. I'm going to rename this to button underscore animated underscore confirmation, right, for example. And if we now use an instance of this component on this page, let me do that remove the first one. And then in the prototype, when I reset this, you can see that still this component doesn't have any states predefined, but because it contains a different component, it contains this component, then the interactions are simply being carried along with the child component, if that makes sense, right? So essentially all the interactions that we have right here are being translated into this new component because we used an instance of that component, right? Simple enough. Now, what we need to do next though, is basically create something extra. And the extra thing here is this animation. Now we're gonna require another variant, definitely, right? This is gonna be an interactive component. So we will definitely need another variant. This interactivity is going to be triggered after and a type of interaction called touch up. So when I connect these two, let me connect those, right? We're gonna go to touch up. And after touch up, we're gonna change that to variant two. Let me just change the property names. Property one is gonna be called state. And this is gonna be called default. And then this one is gonna be called confirmation one. Right? There are going to be more states. I'm going to explain all that later. And we want to, I think, we want to be adding an extra delay because we want to wait for this animation to take place, this while pressing animation to take place after this had time to revert back to its initial state, if that makes sense, right? So essentially, we press down a button, the nested button moves into a press down state we release our mouse and we have instructions to go after releasing our mouse or our finger to change to this state. But first we need to wait for this interaction to revert back to this state. And only then can we start working on our, on another animation, right? Basically put simply, what I'm trying to do here is to avoid a conflict of animations on one single button. If that's not understandable, don't worry. It's very abstract. So instead, let me just show you, right? 
I am going to add a delay of 100 milliseconds. And after that, we need to make a change. We need to start preparing for this thing to launch upwards. But there is nothing that we could launch right now. So we need to do one simple thing, which is create another layer that we're going to put inside of this component to then launch upwards. And I've just copied a text from this button. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be this text, right? It just can be anything basically. But uh, the structure is important. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take whatever I have. It could be a rectangle, right? Whatever I have, I'm going to then turn that into an auto layout by pressing shift A. And this auto layout is going to be centered. And this auto layout is going to have the same dimensions as this button, which is 207 by 56. So let me do that. 207, 56. Okay, let me rename this to confirmation content. And let me turn that into a component. Okay, and now I'm going to use an instance of this component by basically duplicating this. And now we have an instance and I am going to do command X, select this component, this variant, sorry, and then command V. And as you can see, actually, it didn't work. This happened to me before. So when that doesn't work, you simply drag whatever you have inside of that variant. Now it works, but it looks broken. What we need to do is basically turn that into an, an absolute position element, right? It's now absolute position and then move that below the original contents. So what we have right now is this. Let me show you. We have this component nested inside of this variant, but we can now move this around freely and it's going to be translated into our instances. We also need to make sure that when I resize this component, the button changes sizes alongside with that. So let me select button and button from this component and set this to fill container. However, I want to do the same for the absolute position instance, but this one doesn't have fill container. So what do we do? We use frame constraints because the same rules don't apply for this element because it's basically not a part of an auto layout. It's basically a part of a frame and an, an analogy for fill container is left and right. So now you can see that when I resize this instance, the button resizes, which is a member of an auto layout. But at the same time, this thing resizes as well while not being a member of the auto layout, right? So this happens, which is exactly what we need. Let me just put a bit of a background on this component so we can see what's happening. Perfect. Now, when that is finished, let me take this variant and add another one. So we basically have state called confirmation 02. And now what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to make this larger, move this over here, make this larger, and then align that to the bottom. Perfect. So what I want to do now is move this button confirmation content somewhere around here, and then I'm going to make sure the opacity of this is zero. Okay. Additionally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure this right here is going to be aligned to the bottom. And, and now we have two different states where the second state is basically with this thing, this button confirmation content pulled upwards, but invisible, right? I hope this all makes sense so far, but bear with me. I think the result is going to be worth it. I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this variant prototype, and then I'm going to connect these two. And I am going to do after delay, and this delay is going to be, let's say just one millisecond, change to state confirmation zero two, and it's going to be smart animate. So we're going to get a movement. We're going to get a movement of this nested component. So it should be animated and move upwards and disappear into nothing, fade out essentially. And then what I'm going to do is basically select this variant and connect that to the first variant and then do again after delay, change to state default. And this is not going to be smart animate. This is going to be instant. 
and the delay is also going to be one. So basically no delay, right? I'm just gonna set this up to take around 800 milliseconds, meaning this interaction and let's test this out, right? Let's test this out. I am going to use an instance of this button animated confirmation button and I'm going to use this over here. Actually, I already have an instance of this here, so sorry about that. We're just gonna use what is here. So reset, then design system, and here we have our button. Now, the moment of truth. I'm going to approach the button, press it down, hold it pressed down, and now I'm gonna release the mouse. And voila, we get a beautiful confirmation animation. It should revert back, meaning I should be able to click again and do another beautiful confirmation animation. And now the best thing about this is this. I can now change this component. I can remove the background and I can, for example, add an emoji like confirmed or whatever, put whatever inside of this component. And then it should be, as you can see, automatically updated, right? Isn't that great? Now I'm going to make a small adjustment. I'm gonna take the button confirmation content and I'm gonna move it way up, way more up so that it travels a longer distance like this, perfect. Now this looks more convincing. And if I'm not happy with, for example, the alignment of this, what's inside, I can simply change the design and can do, um, I can align that to the left. Then I can do a background on this, um, add padding. So basically right now I have a nested auto layout, right? Do some rounding, maybe add a shadow. Okay, I don't know this for example and see what happens right you can see it it's updated but still um, with that kind of speed you're not able to appreciate this small design adjustment so why don't we make this a bit longer maybe we we're gonna be able to see that yep this looks great awesome the only disadvantage is you, you have to be patient you have to wait for the animation to end for it to work again but I think with especially with faster animations that's not going to be a problem i'm just going to revert this back and i can also do another thing another great thing about this is that you can add a variant of this add a variant of the confirmation content and you can for example make this say error right something bad happens and you want to say error as opposed to confirmed so you just change this let me just change this so you might have to create like another component let me show you for example this and make this say button animated error or more like button animated confirmation error and this one's going to be success and what you're going to do is in the first case you're going to have let me change the names so type sorry type success error right and then in the success one you're going to make sure all these nested instances are set to success right success and in here they are set to error and error as well. I'm also gonna make sure that these over here, let me change that, they have no icon left and also no icon right. Let me just turn off these icons, right? Let me just turn off these icons let me change the button text to confirm and then this one to error and now if we use these components the confirm one and then the error one they should reflect these changes let me do that confirm and error let me reset the prototype that's confirmation and that's error right so it seems that you have to do it this way where you create a separate component for a type of confirmation, 
right? But still, this is pretty useful. Of course, you can also change the width and the position of the error should change alongside with that or more like the confirmation. I'm not sure why this is not being reset, but it should be. Let me just relaunch the prototype. Right, perfect, confirmed, error again, it's centered, beautiful, awesome. So that's how you create this type of interaction. If you want to support the channel and save time and download all of this, go and check out the link in the description where you can download the source file for this video and also this five hour video, right? If you found this video useful, I would appreciate you leaving a like. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.